In this video, I'm going to be using the Photon Mono X from Anycubic. This is my very first resin 3D printer, and I was pretty surprised by what I found. Geek Buying again gave me the opportunity to review one of their printers, so I asked you, my viewers, what you wanted to see. A resin 3D printer was the resounding response, so Geek Buying sent me their most popular model, the Anycubic Photon Mono X. As with all my reviews, I'm under no obligation to give it a good review if I don't think it deserves one. As this is my first resin 3D printer, I'm not going to be able to tell you how it stacks up against other models just yet. However, what you are going to get is a 100% honest review of the experience of the first couple of weeks of owning and using your first resin 3D printer. If by the end of the video you decide that you want to buy one of these for yourself, then as always, there are links to some good deals in the description below. As some of you may know, I'm relatively experienced with FDM 3D printers and have a number of models from different manufacturers. I assumed that because I'd 3D printed quite a lot that I would get to grips with a resin 3D printer pretty quickly. I was wrong. Now that's not to say that using a resin 3D printer is difficult, quite the opposite actually. What I mean is that because FDM and resin machines are both called 3D printers, it doesn't mean that they are alike in pretty much any way. I did actually get that. But... Yes, they can basically both print the same models and they both build the model up in layers. But other than that, I'd say there are hardly any similarities at all. Where FDM 3D printers melt filament and squeeze it out of a nozzle like toothpaste, resin 3D printers use a liquid resin media and harden specific areas with the use of UV light or a laser beam. There are many different ways that a resin printer can harden the resin, but the Photon Mono X, like many of the more popular resin printers now, uses an LCD screen to mask areas where it doesn't want the resin to harden and lets light through in the areas where it does. The printer then moves the whole model up to allow more resin to flow in underneath before bringing it back down to a position fractionally higher than where it was so that it can repeat the whole process on the next layer. The massive benefit of this method is that you can have very, very thin layer lines, which makes the layers almost invisible to the human eye. As you would imagine, this different method for creating our 3D shapes brings with it a whole host of new variables and processes to get your head around. The first thing I noticed when unpacking the Mono X is that unlike most FDM 3D printers, you don't actually get everything you need in one box. There's no resin included and there's also nothing to clean your prints with once you're done. That's right, once your 3D printer's finished and you've removed it from the build plate, you've got a little bit of work to do. You need to clean off the excess resin that's on the outside and potentially inside of your print. There are a couple of different methods for doing this, but the most popular way is to use denatured alcohol, or IPA. This can be done with a small tray or jar and a brush, but by far the easiest way is with a parts washing machine like this one that Geek Buying also supplied. This is basically a little washing machine for your 3D printed part. You pour in your cleaning solution of choice and then lower your part into the tub using a basket. You set the timer for a few minutes and when it's done, your excess resin is removed. Now this all may sound like an unnecessary luxury, but it's actually not the best feature of this machine. This is not just a wash machine, but a wash and cure machine. You see, when your part's finished printing, it's not actually 100% fully cured. To fully cure your part, it needs to be bathed in UV light for a little while longer. You could sit it out in the sun for a little while to do this, but I live in the UK where we rarely see the sun in between seemingly non-stop rain showers. This is where the wash and cure machine comes into its own. When you lift off the wash tank and add a small turntable, you're ready to final cure your 3D printed part in front of a number of UV lights. These provide plenty of light to fully cure your part in just a couple of minutes. So while the whole process looks more involved than FDM printing, it's actually not that bad, especially if you've got a wash and cure machine to help you out. As you've probably picked up on, you do need some more personal protection when working with the resin and cleaning fluids. You should always wear nitrile gloves when handling the resin and, well, anything that the resin comes in contact with. A few pairs of gloves are provided along with a face mask, which we should probably wear because who knows the long-term effects of breathing in the resin fumes. You definitely don't want either the resin or cleaning fluid in your eyes, so if you don't already wear glasses, I'd suggest at least some basic eye protection. Also, you're going to use quite a few more consumables with resin printing. A roll of tissue nearby is a must. If you're planning to buy a 3D printer, start saving those glass jars, takeaway containers and ice cream tubs. These can be really handy for dropping resin coated parts into or for storing resin contaminated alcohol. Rather than just disposing of the cleaning fluid once it's been contaminated with resin, you can actually just let it settle for a little while and then partially cure the resin in the sun or the curing machine before pouring off the alcohol that's separated from the congealed resin. You can then fully cure this congealed resin on its own so that it's solid. You can then dispose of this fully cured resin safely while your cleaning fluid can keep on working for you. There will be times when you need to clean out your resin vat, whether it's to change resin or for another reason. When you do this, you'll need to pour the resin back into the bottle. You can make a makeshift funnel out of the top of an old bottle like I did while I was waiting for my Amazon order to arrive. 
However, what I bought was a collapsible silicon funnel with a number of filters. This ensures you don't let any small particles of resin back into the bottle and the resin won't stick to the silicon. I also bought a few silicon mats that you can put under or near your printer that you don't have to worry about getting resin on. They not only wipe clean, but if you dump all of the mess on them and you guessed it, leave it in the sun, you can peel off the cured resin later, leaving you with a clean mat. There are links to all of the little accessories I bought to make life easier in the description below if you want them. So now I've given you a bit of an overview of the whole process of resin 3D printing, what about the Anycubic Photon Mono X? Well, once I had my resin, setting it up and running off my first print couldn't really have been any easier. The manual's really good and explains all of the setup process. The only thing you really need to do is level the build plate. To do this, you just loosen the screws with the included Allen key, place a piece of paper on top of your screen and then tell your printer to home. Once it settles, you hold it down and then nip up all of the screws in a way that won't cause any part of it to lift. Once that's done, you lift it up, attach your resin vat, pour in your resin, attach your cover and then press print. There's a test print already loaded on the included USB stick, so I printed that first. This came out fine, but when it came to printing something on my own, I hit a bit of a wall. Having found a way to tentatively get past this wall, I would say that the most difficult part of resin 3D printing, at least that I've found so far, is slicing. Slicing is the process of using software to slice any model you want to print into layers for your 3D printer to use. Slicing for FDM printers can also be a bit tricky, but there are usually some default profiles that will get you by until you learn a bit more. However, with resin 3D printing, you need to give it a bit more thought. There are a few options for slicers to use, but they are different from FDM slicers. After a bit of research and trying out a couple of options, I settled on lychee. Some say it as lychee, I say lychee, you're just going to have to deal with that. There's a very capable free version of lychee which comes with a few adverts, but there are also a couple of paid tiers if you want more options. I've only used the free version so far and it works great. The Mono X comes with Anycubic's own photon slicer, but I just didn't really like the user interface and it doesn't seem as comprehensive as lychee. As with all of these kind of programs, there are many YouTube guides and I've linked to the ones that are most helpful to me in the description below. My favourite feature of Lychee is the magic button. This uses some very clever analysis of your model to suggest an orientation, support type and placement. Sometimes it seems to suggest some pretty crazy ideas, but most of the time it works well. The other thing to consider is that if you hollow out your model to save on resin, you also need to add a hole or two. This has two functions. One is to drain the resin out of your print when you're finished, but also if placed in the correct place, they can help avoid suction, which can actually pull your model from the build plate. The major thing that I had to get my head around was the fact that a resin printer prints upside down compared to an FDM printer. Supports on an FDM machine are there to hold up hot melted plastic against gravity from underneath while it cools. Supports on a resin printer are there to hold up very thin layers of cured resin from above until there are enough cured layers beneath them to keep things solid. That may not sound like a big difference, but it makes a bit of difference to how you use them. Learning how to orientate and support your 3D models can be the main difference between success and failure. The chest piece printed pretty well, apart from the missing end of an ear. But my next few prints failed. A print failure is not actually as drastic as it can initially seem. All you get is an area of cured resin that's stuck to the clear plastic sheet known as the FEP or FEP sheet that sits against your screen in the bottom of your resin vat. You need to pour off the resin in the vat to get to it, but rather than trying to scrape it off, the easiest way to remove it is actually attach a scrap support to it. You do this by exposing the whole of the bottom of the resin vat to UV light by doing an exposure test. This cures all of the resin dregs in the bottom of the vat, so you can pull it all away in one piece. Once everything's removed and your vat is wiped clean, you can pull your resin back in and have another go. There were then a couple of settings that I needed to dial in to get successful prints again. First, you need to decide on the UV power percentage. This is basically the power of the UV light and is set on the printer itself. Clear resins need more power to cure, but darker resins like this grey that I'm using need less. Anycubic recommended 80%, so that's what I set it to. Next, and the major setting that you need to dial in, is exposure time. As we've discussed, the liquid resin is exposed to UV light to cure it. The amount of time that you expose the resin to the light on each layer needs to be tuned to get the correct detail. Too little and your resin won't be cured enough, which can lead to delamination or even your model coming away from the build plate. Too long an exposure and you'll lose intricate detail. This needs to be done with each different type of resin that you use, a little bit like a temperature tower with FDM printing. Anycubic also supply a file called RERF, which stands for Resin Exposure Rangefinder. What this file does is prints eight identical prints on your build plate at one time, but each has different exposure times. I broke some of mine because they were too well stuck to the build plate. In theory, you can compare the results and see which one looks the best. I didn't find this very easy though, as I didn't really know what I was looking for and the longest exposure time kind of looked the best to me. 
you can run the same test again, changing the initial exposure time on the printer itself to bump up the first print and consequently the whole range. But instead, I use this cones of calibration model from table flip foundries. This file doesn't leave anything to interpretation, it's either right or wrong. I settled on 4.3 seconds with 80% UV power and the Anycubic grey resin. Once this calibration was done, I really started to hit my stride. I started getting more adventurous with each print and I'm more than happy with the results. One of the best examples I've had of the difference in quality between FDM and resin printing is this Spider-Man bust. They both took the same amount of time but the detail is way better on the resin print. Here are some of the other things I've printed and I absolutely love the detail on some of these. I'm absolutely useless at painting in any kind of artistic way, but I feel like it's something I might need to get into to really get the best from this awesome machine. It's not perfect though. The acrylic cover on the unit I received was warped and it didn't sit nicely on the top. It doesn't affect the operation in any way, but it annoyed me. And I actually ended up switching the cover with the wash and cure machine as they're the same size, but it fitted much nicer. I also don't love the USB stick sticking out the side. It's just waiting to be snapped off and you're probably better off buying a low profile version to keep things tidy. There's a phone app that you can use to connect to your printer through your Wi-Fi. All it really does is lets you press a button on your phone to start and stop prints instead of pressing the screen on the printer. You can see the print progress, but without a camera, you don't know if it's successful or not. So I don't really use it. I also found it frustrating that I had to buy more stuff after opening the box just to start using the Mono X. At the very least, you're gonna need resin, a cleaning solution and something to clean your prints in. It's not only the cost of these extras, but also the time that you're gonna to have to wait for them to be delivered if you don't have a local supplier like I don't. This does seem to be pretty much the norm with all resin 3D printers though. All in all, I've really enjoyed my first few weeks of owning and using a resin 3D printer. Most of the challenges I've had to overcome are because of the way resin 3D printing is done and not specifically caused by this 3D printer. The Mono X uses a 4K screen, not to be confused with the Mono X 4K, which is a smaller unit. There is a 6K Mono X, which is a little bit bigger, so there are plenty of options to suit your budget and size requirements. The model I've been using has got an 8.9 inch screen and a build volume of 192 by 120 by 245 millimeters high. If you're used to FDM printers, then that may seem quite small, but you can still print some pretty sizable things in awesome detail. As per the name, the Mono X uses a monochrome LCD screen. In basic terms, this means a faster print speed and the screen should last a lot longer. I'm told that eventually screens do wear out, which is another reason to turn down your UV power. The lower power helps the screens last longer. You should still get thousands of hours out of each screen though, so don't expect to have to change it anytime soon. Compared to FDM printers, there are also way fewer moving parts on a resin printer, which means way fewer things to go wrong. And well, that's as far as I've gone on my resin printing journey. I'm sure there are a whole host of things to learn in time, but right now I'm really happy with the results I'm getting. Once I've learned more, I'll make more resin 3D printing content, so hit subscribe and the notification bell if you don't want to miss out. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you want to know more about any of the things I've mentioned in this video. Also, if you're more experienced with a resin 3D printer, then educate me. Leave me a comment with your tips and tricks to help me and anybody else read in the comments. If you want to see one of my other 3D printer reviews, then click here, or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.